Good Tuesday morning, everyone, and welcome back. The time is 645. Beautiful morning sky to get our day started as you head out the door. Also getting us started this Tuesday, the partial shutdown of the federal government is now in its 18th day, and there's still no end in sight. This evening, President Trump will make a televised appeal to the public about the Republicans' key demand, a wall along the Mexican border. The president will address the nation from the White House at 9 p.m. Eastern. Democratic leaders have denounced the speech as a political stunt. On Monday in Helena, U.S. Senator Steve Daines told MTN he won't predict an end to the shutdown, but said it needs to end as soon as possible. This weekend, he wrote a letter to Acting Secretary of the Interior David Bernhardt to secure funds for National Park Services during the shutdown. He says Bernhardt told him Sunday millions of dollars alone will now go toward national parks in Montana for critical services like trash removal and plowing. The senator says both sides must be willing to compromise to open the federal government government back up, but says increasing border security isn't an un unreasonable request. Speaker Pelosi says it's zero. President Trump says five billion. They can meet somewhere in between there and get this sorted out. I was in business for 28 years. We've got to figure out a way to go forward here. We can open the government up, which we need to do, and fund the border security. Meanwhile, the tax season approaching, the IRS says it won't let the shutdown stop refunds from going out. Last night, the agency announced that income tax season will start on schedule at the end of this month. It also said refunds would be issued on time. Those were delayed during previous shutdowns until the federal government had reopened. The 66th session of the Montana legislature kicked off on Monday. Republicans control a 58 to 42 majority in the Montana House. Under some new rules voted on by all Republicans Monday, a simple majority, 51 members, can overrule the Speaker's decision on which committee gets a bill and the Speaker's assignment of committee members. It also reduced the number of votes needed to remove a bill stalled in committee to the floor from 60 to 58. All 42 House Democrats voted against the change saying the simple majority rule should also apply to moving a bill from committee to the floor. The 2019 session starts its first committee hearings today. And down in Wyoming, the Cowboys state ushered in its new governor. Mark Gordon, the former Wyoming state treasurer, took the helm on Monday from term limited Matt Mead to lead the state. Gordon's son, Spencer, even built a custom podium for his dad. On the front, the engraved he engraved a picture of the Wyoming Capitol building. In this week's leading up to his inauguration, Gordon worked to transition from treasurer to governor, but also helped the incoming treasurer learn the ropes. Class is back in session today for Circle Public Schools. This comes after a closure on Monday due to an ongoing threat. The Macomb County Sheriff's Office posted on Facebook last night that through coordination with other agencies, they developed and in implemented a plan that eliminates all immediate threats and takes steps to ensure that no future threats will arise from the situation. Although previous posts by Circle Public Schools don't mention any details, it appears the schools have been dealing with the threat since December 20th. The Macomb County Sheriff's Office also stated in last night's post, quote, to protect the privacy of all individuals involved, no specific details of the situation can or will be divulged. A Montana case will appear on the United States Supreme Court docket today, one that could set a precedent for tribal hunting rights and the application of Indian treaties. The case is Claven Herrera versus Wyoming, and it involves a member of the Crow tribe who took an elk in Wyoming and was later convicted of illegal hunting. Several years ago, Herrera pursued an elk across the reservation line into the state of Wyoming. Game Warden said Herrera violated state gaming laws. However, Herrera believes the Laramie Treaty of 18. 68 is on his side, where tribal members have the right to hunt on unoccupied land. In response, Wyoming said those treaty rights ended when Wyoming became a state. The Supreme Court may not reach a decision until late spring or early summer. A father and his daughter are facing federal drug charges after a raid on their home in West Billings. Gregory Paul Green and Brittany Nicole Green were arrested and are being charged with possession of methamphetamine with intent to distribute and conspiracy to possess with intent to distribute methamphetamine. Court documents state when agents went into the home on Westwood Drive, they found two rooms with drugs and drug paraphernalia. They concluded that a very large-scale drug operation was being run from the home. 
Also found, a computer in Gregory Green's room where the dark web was displayed and a screen showed that Green was selling Xanax bars to people across the country and using Bitcoin as a currency for the drug trade. Agents seized over 200 grams of suspected methamphetamine and several thousand Xanax bars and other items of evidence from the home, along with a large amount of drug paraphernalia and instructions for making the drugs. Gregory and Brittany Green were taken to the Yellowstone County Detention Center. A 31-year-old Billings man faces several felony criminal endangerment charges after police say he rammed his SUV into cars, crashed into a gym, and hid from police in a dumpster. It all took place early Saturday morning when Chase Barnes allegedly crashed his Ford excursion into the Anytime Fitness on Main Street in the Heights. But police say before that, he rammed a car in the parking lot, pushing the occupants with his vehicle. The fiasco ended at the Walmart in the Heights, where Barnes is accused of ramming another car into a light pole, driving through a fence, and uprooting a tree. Police say Barnes was drinking black velvet before the incident, and they eventually found him hiding in a garbage dumpster. And we have more details on Sunday's Rosebud County crash that claimed one life. County Coroner Frank Arb has identified the victim as 21-year-old Landon Moreland of Forsyth. The crash happened around 2.30 Sunday morning on Reservation Creek Road off of Old Highway 10. According to Highway Patrol, Moreland failed to negotiate a turn, went off the road, and hit a tree. The vehicle became engulfed in flames. The crash is still under investigation, but authorities believe alcohol and speed may have been factors. A lame deer teenager is identified as the victim of a high-speed chase and crash late Friday night. 17-year-old Kobe Highwater was killed when the car he was in lost control on a left-hand curve and ran off the right side of the road on Highway 212. The crash happened as the vehicle was being chased by the Northern Cheyenne BIA. Montana Highway Patrol says the driver, a 21-year-old woman, along with the victim, were both thrown from the vehicle. Neither were wearing their seat belts. We are told there was a 15-year-old girl in the car at the time. Highwater died on scene, and the two females were transported to a Billings hospital. Alcohol and speed are considered factors. And we now know the name of the man who died in a crash in Glendive Sunday. He was identified as 80-year-old Gary Wanger of Circle. The Highway Patrol says Wanger was driving on Montana Highway 200 when he crashed into the side of a tractor and flatbed trailer that was attempting to turn from the I-94 ramp. Both the driver of the trailer and his passenger were not injured. Wanger was pronounced dead on scene. In other news, gas for under $2 a gallon is popping up in Billings again, but experts say likely not for long. Prices fell 7.5 cents a gallon last week, hitting an average of 2.28 in the Billings area Sunday. According to GasBuddy.com, the price at Costco Monday was $1.99 and Sam's Club was selling for $1.94. Oil industry analysts say prices below $2 a gallon are becoming increasingly common nationwide, but say the window for cheap gas will likely close by mid-February. Prices in Billings on Monday were 26 cents lower per gallon compared to a year ago and just more than 40 cents down from a month ago. A Glendive family has been living full-time in Billings for the last few months, cherishing every moment they can with their new baby. TJ and Trista Brooks say eight-month-old Braxton was born with a condition so rare he's the only male in the world to have it. And his life won't last long. The family has been taking up care at St. Vincent Healthcare since October as Braxton needs constant attention. He was born premature in Denver with no eyes, half deaf, and has four heart defects. His condition is known as ocular facial cardiodental syndrome, and as far as they know, he's the only boy in the world with the deadly condition. Trista says she has a mutated X chromosome, so that means any additional children they have will be born with the same condition. So they are trying to enjoy every moment of parenting with Braxton that they can. There's some days that it's hard. Some days we just take it day by day. So I think when it gets closer to the end, it'll be even harder. So even though he's different, you know, he's special and we love him. The Brooks family tells us there are currently 20 baby girls with the syndrome.